Well, good morning again, and this is Dr. Bill Wyatt with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to talk to you a little bit about a uh, the, one of the worst palatal separation cases I ever had. Uh, most uh, separated it, and this was years ago. So this young lady had more than just a mouth breathing problem. Now, palatal separation is something that's created by somebody just breathing through their mouth. And you can't breathe through your mouth without holding your tongue in your lower arch. And that widens the lower arch out and the upper arch doesn't develop properly. So that's why we, uh, in, we try to get people to nurse their children just as long as they can uh, do it. I realize it's a real problem in there, but a child cannot breathe through their mouth while they're nursing. And a lot of times they nurse, we found this out in Africa, they'll nurse for about two and a half years, and uh, that gives them a chance for the upper maxilla to develop, and their airway develops, and they also inherit all the resistance to disease and things that the mother has, or a lot of it. So, but we can't go into that too much today. This young lady has a problem, and it is really a mess. And we, the palatal separation device is one of the best tools that we've had in orthodontics. And I think it is really a good thing to learn about. And let me get you going on this. And here is this young lady, and she's got a little look in the eyes that's not different, but you don't see all this uh, much problem down in here on the bottom, uh, bottom arch where she has such a lot of problems. Now here is the models of this, and these were taken in 1975, and that's why we, we were still using bands and everything else in here. And this young lady is missing one of her molar teeth up here, and I couldn't start this thing immediately. We had to kind of wait on it. When you look through the side here, I mean, this is a hideous case. So let's think if this young lady grew up with this, it would be a real drawback in her life. And the side is always just about as bad over here. Now, and looking at it from the top, you can see we've got a six year motor here, but something's missing in this area. And it seemed like we had to wait to get that. Now here we went along and put a space maintainer to open up this gap in here, maybe to get a tooth to come in. And we're going to look at the x-rays here in a minute. Now the uh, cephalometric shows, you know, we've got a problem. We've got a wisdom teeth uh, forming back there. I can't see the others uh, developing. But we go. Now here, we've got teeth underneath here, and we've got to lift this tooth up into place. And we had a missing tooth in this, this portion of the mouth right here. And that's where we had to kind of wait on that to get something. We could get this wisdom tooth down in here before we actually started that uh, case. Now, here we straighten that over oh, this space maintainer and did not much. I mean, it goes up against this baby tooth, the baby tooth eating up, so it's not uh, doing all that much. Over here, we have no wisdom teeth, and we're just going to close these gaps together. Now, up here, there's something I can't see on this x ray right there. We had to wait to that to develop. We did not cut this, so this x-ray was going to right here between the centrals. Uh, cut that off and put it together. This was 1957, and now here's the palatal separator 
we first one we put in, and we had a tooth came in, so we got, and we banded this one too, and we put the separator, but this hasn't been sectioned, so this would be taken through the, here, the old type pattern rake, like that, and so we put that together. Now, we widened it out, and this is 1976. We didn't take long to get to this point. We've got her here with all this, and here comes this wisdom tooth down on that side, and she has one development over there too. So we spread it out, and I wore a brace in between to maintain the brace of it is something to hold this in place. Now if you're pinning on expanding with bars like this, it'll just lead the teeth out this way and the roots will go in some. So you need to widen it good. So we used a, a double palatal separator. I came in and did it once and then I opened it again and one of the bands came off right here, and we got it back on. In fact, we used two separators. Now, this is starting off in 75. Well, I don't know, this is 74. That must be wrong. So, there. so we went in here in 1974 and put a palatal separator in and we have this cemented bands here, and we had nothing behind here much. Now if you get this tooth in, you can put a, a arch wire in here and carry it out with them. It'll help to bring it that way. Now we've got centrals, laterals, cuspids, and first and second bicuspid. Central, lateral, cuspid, first and second bias, and we don't have a molar tooth back at that point. Now this is 1975 and that's when we started that. Now there's the night, you know, something's really screwed up here. I've got 75 and 74. This uh, must be 70, something a lot worse than that. The, the timing in here is messed up. All right, we came back and banded all this and put it in, in. We opened another separator right here. This is two of 75. And we just spread it out with one and then put another one. I don't know if there's uh, any limit to the amount you can separate it. Now these bands hold those teeth rigid. And as you go apart with them, they'll flex a little this way, and we keep it in for several months, and chewing on the lingual cusp tend to bring out the teeth a little bit. It'll help. And so, and this lady had a defect in the bone structure. This little depression right there showed up when you took an impression. But you could, you wouldn't even, I didn't even know it was there. And if you put your finger up there and press on this area right here, you can feel the, there's a hole in the bone structure, but the tissue c covered that. And we separated it and that hole stayed the same. There, so that came, I learned something from that too. So we went out hard. Now on the bottom, we got everything lined up again. Now this is 1976, and we're about to finish it up. I took that off and I put a bar in there to hold it apart. Now I took, and this is my little finger on my left hand, which you see right here, and that's the one that's on there. And I stuck it in there, and my little finger touched the teeth on both sides across here. Uh, when we started this case. And here it is, after we got it out here and I had this kind of hold it out there. I didn't trust it uh, there. 
to hold it in that position. And I put my little finger in, and it would go, you, if you put it in here, you'd have about two and a half times. You could put your finger in this space right here. And it held up at that point. And so we filled it out like that. And I'll rush on through this, closed all the space up. And now, this is 76, we get the midline correction in 77, and we wear this for a while, and she wears it uh, so before we take it off and go into uh, retainers. Now this opening in the bone structure right here, never did get any bigger. If I'd known it's there, I think I would have been afraid to go in there and do this. So she had a defective palatal bone structure. And the top, is, this is 77. Now this is 77 also, and we're back when you had bands, you lift your motor on and you put it these long, thin elastics in, and you had a chew bubble gum, and the teeth would close the spaces up, and boy, just as quick as the space closed up, you got an impression of it, and you made a retainer in a few days or two, and got it back in the mouth to hold it like that. So you couldn't go to somebody, and when you got them finished, and they think you ought to take it out, Nowadays, I mean, after we got going good with this and put brackets on the teeth, we could bring the parents, if it's a child or if it's a, if it's a grown person, we could say, you could, it's going to look like this when we take this thing off. But here, you close all that space and you lose some of the torque up here. So bands are not near as good as, as brackets but I used to ban the motors. Uh, and this is 1977, and this is the mouth structure after we cut that thing out of the top of the mouth up here. And you can see this little defect. It'd show up and the impression would make a dent in there, but you wouldn't know it unless you felt up there and pressed into it. And so we close that up as good as we could. And here it is in 76 or 77. And those teeth, you get them in the ballpark and they'll come down. And we got the lingual cusper hitting good. We've closed this. These points will go in here. And you look at that and take a picture of it. And you hold it in place and let them close, and that'll go back, they'll wear in. And so this is 77, here it is, still 77. Now, this is 1978, right here, and here's 1975, I think that was 74 though, uh, and Look at the difference you can make in people's lives. I mean, this is a totally different person than this would be right here. And the chances of them getting some work in life are so much better. I mean, it's the satisfaction of looking like that. And that's, it's been a thrilling thing to me uh, to be able to do this for people. I mean, and it helps this person's life, whole life changes when you do this for them. And that's uh, it's been an uplifting thing to me. And you look at this and say, my God, if you just didn't know how to do this, you just couldn't dream of getting from here. But you can do it. And we've got these videos now, and I'm trying to show every aspect of it so that people anywhere in the world see something like this. You've got to get set up to do orthodontics and you've got to do the simple 
easy stuff first, but after a while you can do stuff like this. And this is something, this is from the side over here. I mean, these teeth coming in, it's a big mess. This will actually, these teeth will come down into those spots better than it is even there in 78. 1978 on the other side of the mouth, there it is. And so my point in doing these videos as long as I can do it is to show people wherever they go what can be done in here. And if you don't jump on something like this to start with, but learn orthodontics, and this is the tough stuff that you do in orthodontics, and it is the most challenging uh, thing that you get into. So I hope you learn from this and drop us a line. We will try to uh, answer the questions back if you have them, but I, I'm not able to answer everything that uh, comes up, but we will try. And this is where this person has a defect in the bone. It's covered up by thick tissue. You hear this part right through there. But it's a defect and it still worked. If I, I did not know it was there when I was separating, but I found out after, then I would have been afraid to separate it if I had known it. But I didn't know about it, and it had no effect on that hole. It's just as big over here as it is here, right there. So this is the bottom arch, and there we are on it, 78, 75, and here is the young lady appearance right here and I hope you sign up with our program and, uh, and, and subscribe to our channel we've got three channels now in in YouTube and uh, one of them is just a general everything and the other one is a uh, more of a lecture type and then we've got one we're putting pediatric stuff and I think that pediatric dentists should be doing orthodontics and it's ridiculous they aren't and the university trained people ought to be doing these tough cases even this is a pediatric problem you probably wouldn't want to jump on this but anyway this is my desire that we get this spread all over the anywhere in the world that you can pick this up and see what we do. And thank you for watching, and I hope that we help people wherever this goes. I don't care what religion, whatever else they are, black or white, let's give everybody wants to look better. And that we have so much terrible stuff going on today, it's hard to get your mind on looking good but uh anyway that's the way it is thank you for watching and i'm going to hang up now and say goodbye